Hey guys, my name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the audiophiliac, and I am not home. No, I am at the Harmon store in New York City to hear the all new JBL 4309 uh, stand mount speaker, bookshelf speaker, monitor speaker. Let's go with monitor speaker because I think that's really what it is. It has a pro sound. And, and it was designed at JBL's uh, Northridge, California facility. First of all, it is small, but it isn't. It doesn't sound like a small speaker because it can play loud with surprising grace. It has no sense of impending distortion or strain. It, it can just get louder and louder, uh, almost without limits. And that, in a speaker as small as this, is pretty darn impressive. So let's get to the particulars of the design, starting with the horn which is a JBL high definition imaging horn technology, well, feature we'll call it. And then there is that one inch compression tweeter. And below that tweeter is a cast frame six and a half inch pure pulp woofer. The crossover network features air core conductors, metallized film capacitors, and wire wound resistors. So what we, what we have here is a no holds barred small JBL Pro Style speaker. And that's what it sounds like. Oh, and there are front ports, you know, so there's no rear ports to worry about close placement to a wall. There's also a high frequency trim available right there on the front baffle, which is kind of cool. And the build quality feels, let's just say, robust. This is one very solid feeling box. There are two finish options, walnut with a blue grill or black walnut with a black grill. Impedance is rated at four ohms, and well, I'll just put up the complete specs for your perusal, well, right now. And of course, even though I'm here at the Harmon store in New York City, no worries, there will be an audiophiliac viewer system of the day at the conclusion of this episode. I just realized I haven't mentioned the price. The price is $2,000 a pair. But what does it sound like? What does that $2,000 a pair get you? Well, I would say it gets you a very high resolution, high accuracy, high neutrality sound with incredible dynamic, let's say prowess, right? You play a recording that has some dynamics to it, you will feel those dynamics. You'll feel them in a way that there's no, let's say, inhibition to the sound, right? It's just there, effortlessly there. But it's not a warm and fuzzy and <laughs> sweet sounding, romantic sounding speaker. That it is not. It is not going to soften any harshness that's in a recording because it is a, a pro style recording. It's supposed to tell you about the good, the bad, <laughs> and the ugly, what's going on in recording. And it definitely did that. So it's not, it's not going to, it's not a sweetener. This, this speaker will not sweeten the sound of your recordings. And I learned that when I played. I'll tell you about that soon enough. So if you listen to a lot of harsh, heavily compressed pop music, maybe this isn't the right one for you. But if you have some, <laughs> I was gonna say taste, if you enjoy music that's well recorded, that has dynamics and is reasonably flat and neutral sounding, this speaker will tell you exactly what's going on in the recording. First up, Willie Nelson sings George Gershwin. <laughs> I admit it sounds kind of funny, right? But it's actually a terrific recording, and Willie is 1,000% in. He sounds so good, and he can swing his ass off. And that feeling of just me and Willie, we are right here at the Harmon store, and there was nothing, nothing in the way. That's what I loved about this sound of the speaker. As for the imaging, it is very immediate, precisely focused. You feel like you can, well, outline the image of each instrument, and in this case, Willie Nelson's vocal in the, the overall sound stage. I can't say I was hearing a lot of sound stage depth or spatial cues per se, but the precision of it, left to right, was, was absolutely phenomenal. The other thing that was terrific was uh, Willie's uh, vocals, because the, he, the way he sings, he, his phrasing, his inflections, his dynamic shifts were all right there, right on the money. 
Next up, though, was this uh, Jimmy Page, Robert Plant recording. I guess this is from the 90s. So this is long after Led Zeppelin broke up. But it's kind of a reimagining of these classic Led Zeppelin songs. And it's done, some of it is live and with a, uh, an orchestra. Anyway, to get to the chase here, it was, it's not a good recording. I haven't played this recording in a really long time. And I haven't played it over a high res system. And the recording is just not that good. It's crunchy sounding and not the, not the good kind of crunchy. You know, I didn't spend a lot of time with this one. It was in and out in a couple of minutes. It just was not, not it was not fun. So the next up was Kid Koala's Some of My Best Friends Are DJs. Well, that's a terrific name for an album. Anyway, it's it's strange. It's kind of a mashup. It's samples. It's bluesy. It's hip hop. It's funny. It's got samples of uh, audiophile test records of the 1950s or 60s. It's it's weird, but it's fun. So yeah, this 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 recording can put out some deep bass, and I think the 4309 was doing a very credible job. I think those six and a half inch woofers were definitely holding their own, but if you're into room shaking bass, you're probably going to want to use a sub with this speaker. I'm just saying, as they say. But uh, in a smallish room, small to mid size room, and you're not heavy into bass, you'll, you'll be fine without a sub. So subs aren't mandatory is what I'm saying. So I was having a great time. And I hope I wasn't disturbing other people in the store, but I was playing it loud. And then I played it louder, and then I played it louder, and then I played it pretty much as loud as I wanted to go. Because I'm not really into loud. I'm just doing it loud to, to tell you guys, yes, it can play loud with surprising ease. Surprising ease. It, there's, no, <laughs> there's no sense the speaker's going to give up. At least not for me. Not at the levels I was playing at. Let's get to the, so Steve, what do you really think portion <laughs> of this video? And what I really think is the 4309 is the sort of speaker that will appeal to audiophiles who want neutrality. They want a clear sound. They don't want any audiophile uh, euphonics. Let's put it that way, right? They want pure, direct sound. And that's what this speaker delivers. But that, the, other, the flip side of that is if you want warmth, if you want fullness, if you want a, mm, no, the 4309 will not be for you. And now, and now it is that special time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. Okay, this one comes from Vlad. He is in Michigan. He spent over a decade buying, fixing, and reselling audio components he bought at thrift shops. It was a very slow process to raise enough money to buy the system he's showing here today. Now the speakers are interesting. They are Pure Audio Project Trio 15s, but these are DIY clones using Tang, Band, and Eminence drivers. The Streamer DAC is a Cambridge Audio CXN V2. DAC preamp is a PS Audio Gain Cell. Monoblock amps, PS Audio Stellar 700s, and Power Plant. Uh, power conditioner is a PS Audio P3. There's also an HHB CDR 800 CD transport recorder, Tascam CD A700 cassette player, AudioQuest Rocket and McKenzie balanced interconnects, a homemade equipment rack, and a completely separate Sony receiver system for movies. Thanks a lot, Vlad. We are back, and my name is Steve Guttenberg. And I am the Audiophiliac, and I am a we are. We are closing in on 200,000 subscribers. I'm pretty sure that's going to happen before the end of this month, September. Um, and I'm so thrilled. But if you have yet to join us in this surge to 200,000, now's the time to hit that subscribe button and join us. And when you do, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time there's an amazing new episode. And beyond that, I can tell you, you should, I, I would urge you, I would urge you to check out my Patreon, which can be found at patreon.com slash <laughs> audiophiliac. And there is a link to that in the description below this video. Oh, and also Patreon now accepts payment in dollars, 
pounds and euros. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. So thank you again for watching, and I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon.